We live? We're live. Welcome to Living in the Scriptures live here with Peter, <coughs> Caleb, and Brian. Caleb, what did you talk about this week? <clears throat> yeah, this week at church we were uh, stepping into the first beatitude. Uh, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I wanted to make sure that we had at least a chance to look at the, some of the words that Jesus is using there so that we understand it kind of it kind of narrows us in maybe a little bit more on what Jesus was talking about, <clears throat> what it means to be blessed and where that word comes from. Talk about how blessed has to do with transcendent happiness, uh, the type of happiness that isn't necessarily moved or affected by the comings and goings and, and the happenings in the world. <clears throat> and uh, the, the, the Greeks, especially of Jesus' time, they used that word sort of blessed to talk about the the pantheon of gods who are kind of above all of the happenings of, of the earth and uh, and traditionally the the Jews spoke of God for of course being blessed <clears throat> and so blessed is 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 not just even happiness as we perceive it and we've had that discussion about happiness and joy and I think Peter you're right to think that when you when you said earlier that happiness and joy probably as the biblical writers are talking about it, they're the same thing. And we, we maybe disassociate them, but, um, <clears throat> and think of joy as like a deeper happiness. Um, but just the thought of being blessed as a transcendent happiness, the type of, um, the type of life or the type of experience that maybe even God has in himself. And so Jesus is talking about something pretty significant here. It's not, it's not just a, a, a temporal blessing. It's it's a it's a deep, deep blessing <clears throat> that he's speaking of. And we looked at poor, and he wasn't. There's kind of two words for poor that are used. <clears throat> one being for common poverty, and one being for total destitution, where you can't even provide your at all on your means or for for your life. You're totally dependent on others. Um, y- your hand is out because you 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 literally are dependent upon others to provide for you, to fill your hands for your well-being. <clears throat> yeah, and I loved the just how you explained that. I loved it and I hated it at the same <laughs> time, right? Like, like, you know, after all, like, the entire Beatitudes is kind of paradoxical, right? Like, you know, this is not, like, every one of them is like, you know, that's not what we kind of associate with happiness, joy, or anything, or bless it, right? Like, that's not what, like, are you sh- And yes, that's the kingdom economy. Right, that uh, that at that place of, and I just thought it was you did a great job of talking about the that idea of destitute, not just being in lack, but just being in like bankrupt mode, right? Like we have nothing, and we're just kind of holding <clears throat> our hands for it, and that's where kind of God meets us and mm-hmm. fills us, uh, and so. Really, that that was a challenge to me, you know, mm. as you spoke about that. Because, like you said, on the one hand, you love it. On the other hand, you're like, wow, I, like, I don't, I don't want to be in that spot. And yet, on the other hand, you kind of, you, there's a sense that you're drawn to it. And, and there's a sense in that you really know, I know, that if I'm honest, that is actually who I am. And yet, I don't want that to be. You know, that, that idea of, that, of being needy and yep. really, you know, throwing ourselves at the mercy of God and realizing that God is a gracious and loving Father yep. uh, and without. Yeah, and the other, the other word that we talked about was then uh, spirit being that inner principle. Um, the, the Strong Concordance says it's, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, that principle by which we, we live and and the body is animated and just reflecting on times where we've, we felt carried along by our interest or our enthusiasm or other things like that. And, and those are spiritual matters for spiritual beings. And Jesus is talking about <clears throat> that, that spiritually, as it stands on our own, we're, we're destitute. We're dependent upon God for far more than we may realize on a day-to-day basis. We're dependent on him uh, absolutely for for a lot and jesus says those who recognize like blessed are the poor in spirit and i think um well we'll we'll talk a little bit more about your opinions but i think that uh when jesus is saying that he's saying and what i tried to bring out is that this is 
you're blessed, if you're poor in spirit, it's not that you will be blessed, it's you're blessed right now. And as soon as you enter into a mindset that this is my reality spiritually, this is my reality before God, I have the, the only hope and the only way that I will be sustained is by his hand of mercy giving me thing, you know, gift after gift. And as soon as we recognize that, and, and however difficult of a journey that is, perhaps for some it's <laughs> it's more difficult for others, but as soon as we get to that point, we've already entered into the realm because the fact is that God is constantly giving to us, constantly giving to us. So um, maybe let's just share in our, in our own lives real briefly, um, I mean, Peter, you shared about how just now that, that it, even now it still kind of kicks against you, 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 you find yourself going back to a sort of sufficiency mindset. Um, how about you, Brian? How does this uh, strike you, this first beatitude? Yeah, I can, um, I can look back and say that when I came to faith in Christ, it was because I realized my own spiritual poverty but mm -hmm. to see that as an ongoing thing is a challenge <laughs> yeah. because I do feel that uh, that I'm a pretty good person now. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like I, I can. Uh, uh, do others share that opinion? <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask Tracy. Yeah. No, no. It's easy to think that um, to think that I'm good enough in some ways. Mm -hmm. Um, and don't really have that same need for yeah. salvation. I can provide for myself. I don't really need, um, you know, that provision from God. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, pride can kick in pretty quick, and yeah. I stop to realize <clears throat> how dependent I really, really am. Yeah. Yeah, for myself, I remember, uh, so growing up, believing about Jesus, hearing about him as a young person, desiring to follow him. Um, obviously there's a God, like as a young person, it just seems so obvious. And of course this, this is the right way. And Jesus is my guy. And, um, <clears throat> and yet getting to a place in my mid early twenties, I've talked about this before where, um, just not knowing how to live. And, um, and I, I remember, and I talked, I talked about how, when, when, in the, in the message on Sunday I said that when, when you're out there like this, you know, when the beggar, you're hiding your face, when the coin hits the hand, like you, you, it's, it's a defining moment. You don't miss that. If you're a beggar, you know, when you've received something. And for me, I remember, um, uh, driving my vehicle to my old place in Sexsmith where I was living with some friends, thinking about all God's goodness. And in the last little bit of my life after a very difficult season and even in the midst of a season and, and then it dawned on me and, and just this, it's like a little light switch went on. And it's like, God loves you, Caleb. Like he loves you. He, he's happy to give you this, these good things. When I was, you know, at my worst, when I felt like I was very far from God, he was still showing me kindness. And when I, when that it clicked in my mind, I marveled, like, how did I miss this before? How did I not know that God loved me in this way, but there's something about our hearts that we just, it, we need to be penetrated by God's love. And, 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 and the truth was that knowing God's love all my life, telling people at camp, at church, wherever, of course there's a God, of course he loves you. And of, of course he loves me, but, but not actually living that, having my heart's desire or the other things just attached uh, to, to other interests and other, voices and being sort of destitute in in relation to receiving god's love when when i finally when it dawned on me in that in that moment it was like the coin hit the hand and it was so good you know um have you had moments like that in your life yeah absolutely and, and you know just echoing what uh brian you said right like you know when you first come you know you you sense your brokenness and and as you kind of grow in Christ, I think there's a tendency to become a little, for me, I'll just speak for myself, tendency to be kind of numb or like, you know, I've gotten good enough 
Uh, and I think that's where you almost have to kind of come back to seeing Jesus over and over. Because our standard isn't the, <clears throat> isn't the, I'll say it really bluntly, the moron that's sitting right beside you. Right? <laughs> it's just like, hey, I'm better than that guy. Uh, 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 but it's our standard is Jesus, and it kind of changes, right? Uh, what, what kind of stuns me is when Paul sits there towards the end of his life, Apostle Paul, saying that I am the chief of sinners. And you're thinking, oh dude, like, <laughs> if you're the chief of sinners, um, where's, where do where the rest of us kind of <laughs> sit on that spectrum? And I like there's some real truth to that. I think about my life and, you know, when I first came to Christ, I struggled with things like pride, pornography, and things like that. I've kind of weeded out the big sins, right? The things that really are right up front. Like I, I don't sit at, I don't go to my computer and sit there and think, oh yeah, you know what? Hey, I'm just gonna punch up some pornography, or you know, I ain't kind of like strutting my stuff like yeah. you know with with everything else. But yet, you know, 30 years later, I know my heart. You know, if I'm really quiet and and, and I kind of you know. In before God, am I really going to stand before God and say, hey, God, look at me, I'm so great, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. uh, I know that there's still pride. I know that there's a s- seeds of lust. I know that there's seeds of greed, you know, even as I'm like, you know, I, I know, I, I'm so glad, uh, uh, you know, and that this is not a prideful statement. I'm so glad that I am way more generous and less greedy than I was when I was 20 years old. But now at 50, if I'm really kind of honest, there's times when I just know my heart is like small and it's withered, but it doesn't look that way. Hey, I, you know, like I have to give it, you know, like, and so, yeah, I look pretty decent, right? And, and that's where it kind of like just trips on you versus like, you know, if, if, as, as I grow more in Christ, you know, that, that, I love that illustration, that coin. Every so often I, I feel that coin drop and I realize, wow. And I think I've shared this with you guys. You know, it was probably in the spring when I wrote in my journal, you live from a place of abundance. And kind of coming out of Philippians chapter 4, it's like, you know, God will supply all your needs. Not just some, all your needs. Not, so, like, you know, sometimes when we read, like, you know, uh, Jesus, Lord's Prayer, <laughs> so there's like, you know, he will give, you know, give us this day our daily bread. We're like, you know, give us our car and our, and our, and our big house and my carbon bike and my whatever. No, God will supply all your needs from the riches of Christ Jesus. And, and if you kind of think about that, right? God, Jesus said, you know, what Paul writes about Jesus, like, all things were made by him and for him. <clears throat> Everything, right? Like, all of that. And you just realize, I realize, like, you live from a place of abundance. And your heart, if, if, if that is what Jesus gives, my heart is, like, so <laughs> far from that. And, and, and not, not only was that a statement of, like, I need to kind of grow in that, it was a statement of repentance. Where that, you know, my, I realized for that moment just how small my heart was and how, like, closed and whatever. And, and, and with all the things that are happening, you know, you, you, you st- me, Peter, I'm not going to say we start taking a little bit more of a defensive uh, uh, posture around all of my all of the stuff that God has given me versus like open-handed God freely God gave freely you open-handed and, and you just grow in that and I think that but like I said it's so easy to kind of sit there it's like man I just get numb to it or mm-hmm. I've kind of reached that certain point and I feel like hey uh, um Paul doesn't say it but I will I've arrived <laughs> like, uh, Paul continues and says not that I have obtained it but I keep mm-hmm. getting on and I'm like yeah yeah sometimes we need to think about that that we are still that beggar asking yeah um <clears throat> the and, and the whole the the reason why you're we're, we're blessed in this situation is because we we're, we're able to see from that place especially in relation to our our sin when, when we are when we're standing for god I and mean, we don't that makes sense you don't want to see me you don't want to look at me lord i don't want my face to be known i need something from you um in that initial kind of phase maybe as we're learning about the lord and his holiness um we're blessed in that destitution because we see the, the richness of god's provision in christ we see the beauty of jesus and how he 
he, ta- he's, he is all of God's righteousness. He is all of God's holiness. He is all of God's uh, love. And he's given freely for us. We see what he does in his life. His, his life is, is perfect and beautiful. The way that he endures sinful men. He endures faithless disciples. He endures the rejection of his people. And he goes to the cross and he suffers beyond what we can really imagine. Um, and we see that and we say that that is my hope. That is my treasure right there. That person. That is such a beautiful person. And the world that we live in, I mean, they're enamored with so many things. And Christ is not beautiful in any of those categories. By any of those metrics, uh, Jesus just is kind of, yeah, he doesn't add up. He's not, you're not going to, Jesus or the shiny car. You know, like people are pretty pumped up about the shiny car. But, um, but Jesus is on the side. When we're destitute, we, be, we, we come to a position where the things of this world are not going to meet our needs. And we know it. We know that another car is not going to help us. We know that we could have all the money in the world and it wouldn't solve the deepest problems of our heart. And, and, and that desperation from, I, I'm here in the world, but what in the world can satisfy my true desires? For life, my true desires for peace, true lasting peace. And, and really we're destitute. If, if without Christ, we are destitute. We don't have any, there's nothing in the world that can satisfy this, the longings, the deep spiritual needs and longings of the heart. And we're blessed when we're in that space of recognizing that because we start to see how Jesus meets all of those needs. And he's that gift of God for us. Yeah. Um, those are some of the things that, uh, yeah, that we talked about. Um, yeah. Did, did you have, I just want to give you a chance to reflect a little bit more or say something about, um, I mean, particularly the, the way that the world is, um, I guess really challenging. I mean, Peter's talked about it quite a bit, overcoming our propensity to, to, to f- find fulfillment in the world. Um, yeah, how does, how does this speak to that for you, Brian? Um, well, I think, I'm not exactly sure what your question is there. Yeah, but, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, with, in terms of the world, the world doesn't realize how spiritually poor it is without yeah. Christ, right? Yeah. And one of my questions is, what is my role in helping to open the eyes of those that are blind to their own spiritual poverty yeah. that are still on the wrong road to seeking happiness yeah. and, um, and, and I think on the one hand it, it needs to be something that I model to the world and, and that's where I'm challenged sometimes because I want the shiny car too yeah. and what am I modeling to the world by the way I spend my time by the way I spend my money by the way I talk, you know, do I just talk about the shiny cars? Um, yeah. If, if somebody asked me, you know, is Jesus worth more to you than a shiny car? I would always say yes. But when they just listen to what I talk about, yeah. the amount of time I spend yeah. talking about shiny cars outshines the time I spend talking about yeah. Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah. So how am I modeling this in this world that people see, yeah, you've got... You are blessed without those yeah. things or, or yeah. in spite of, you know, yes, you have a vehicle to drive, but, but, yeah. but we realize, we look at you and we realize that's not where that blessedness comes from. It's something deeper. Yeah. So how am I modeling that? How am I living it in the world? Yeah, and that, that verse from the Psalms that brought up that, you know, God, the glory of men is like, all flesh is like, it's like grass. Yeah. And it withers and it's gone and the place no longer remembers its existence. And I think that this is a difficult thing, um, but we need to become comfortable with engaging people along what I believe are the two lines that God, when God enters into, even with his people, the two things he kind of confronts them with are their mortality and 
your lack of your lack your lack of righteousness specifically mortality i think <laughs> we all recognize that life is what it is not very long maybe longer than we think um but i've become convinced that that in our in our discussions with with other people with non-believers that that we have an ally in just asking simple questions about your future like what then and um I mean, it's a whole nother discussion now about almost apologetics and evangelism and how we go about that. But, but I do think, and, and you know, Francis Schaeffer, um, if you're familiar with that name, his view of evangelism and, and apologetics was you need to bring the person to, to almost despair of their, their, their mortal estate, their lot in this life, to show them that all the things that they desire in their heart um, require a supernatural fulfillment and uh and i think it, it just it's a, it's a whole nother discussion but asking questions about our mortality when we're faced with more our mortality well then everything else you know in those moments seem fleeting but it's the deceitfulness of wealth it's the deceitfulness of possessions that trick you into finding your true life here and uh Another discussion. Thanks. That was a good answer, a much clearer answer to my question. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. No, no. Yeah. And as you guys were talking, I'm like, isn't that the paradox of the kingdom and the Christian Christian faith? Like he said, totally agree with you that that at a certain point we have to demonstrate this. And I don't know if I do as well, right? Like, you know, that where our treasures are, there our heart is, and is our treasure truly the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and maybe this is a little bit of a preview for our Advent series, but you know, one of the most stunning things as Jesus comes into this world is Jesus is the only human who could have picked his circumstances, picked his talent, and whatever. We're all born in a certain place. Uh, we don't get to choose it. We're born with a certain stature, t talent, and, and opportunities. We don't get to pick those and stuff like that. Uh, and we kind of strive towards other. But, you know, Philippians chapter 2 says, you know, being very nature God. So he could have sat there's like, you know, I want to be like 6'4". I want to be like this talented. I want to be this smart. I'm going to be born into royalty and I'm going to have like, you know, an amazing oratorial voice and what have you not and so like, but he actually chooses to be born. Humble circumstances. Humble circumstances. And it's an amazing sort of thing. And I think it kind of bursts out of um, this, right? Like, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If you really, and I sit there and one of you thought about it, do you really believe that ours is the kingdom of heaven? That, you know, when Jesus says, all that is mine is yours, all that is mine. You know, like, you know, in Romans, when, when, when Paul talks about it, like, you know, if God didn't spare his son and gave him for us, how much more would he give you all things, right? And yet, you know, in this life, aren't we striving for all those things? And Jesus says, you know, hey, come to me. I am the author, perfecter of all things and you have an inheritance with me. Everything that you've actually even strived for is fulfilled in me, and everything that kind of comes out of it is that. And that's, a, I just, as you guys are talking about, it just is stunning, and I don't have it yet. I, I'm still, like you said, wrestling with oh, that. Yes. I'm still kind of growing in that and realizing, you know what, hey, no wonder, like you said, if Jesus is really real, Jesus, Jesus says, you know, hey, all that is mine. I don't need to grasp at it. I don't need to grasp at it. Uh, and I think the, the people that, realize that like it said you know um that they are now you know they went from beggars to princes um that changes changes and i was just like you know i need to kind of meditate upon that you know that yeah again once again you know um uh, i i operate from a place of abundance because i'm a child of god yeah. um, and that changes yeah <clears throat> Yeah, I guess the last thought is that is contrasted with, um, you know, the thought of going from someone who's you know has you know you're not wanting to be seen with your hand out uh, to what Hebrew says, where you know boldly we approach the throne, and if we start here, I think I think 
think maybe Paul started here. I can think of other people who in, in their moment of, you know, of realizing their destitution, they think that this is how it is. And that's maybe where you start, but as you continue to receive, continue to receive, continue to receive, you start to realize that this is who God is and that I can, I can stand upright actually before my father, before my king, before the Lord of heaven, and I can come boldly before his throne any time. And, um, and so, yeah, just, I guess, blessings on each one of us as we grow in stature and grow in our faith to, to come boldly before our God who provides, as Peter said, richly, according to, richly, he richly supplies all our needs according with the riches of Christ. Yeah. So, Thank you for joining us for Living the Scriptures Live. And uh, yeah, if you're, if you're still hoping to get connected in life groups, I know that uh, this is the guy to talk to. If, if you're watching this and you're interested, we could use a couple more leaders, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, because there's people want to get in. Um, <clears throat> Brian, if anyone's looking for books, uh, do they just need to talk with you? Yeah, um, I might order some more. Um, all the ones that I've ordered so far uh, have now been snatched up. Uh, I just talked to Shepherd's Fold and they are getting four or five more in, but it'll be another few days before they come in cool. so people could check there. You can also get the Kindle version online for about half price, uh, about half uh, as the, the copy, um, paperback copy. Mm -hmm. So those are options. Yeah, awesome. Very good. And any other words for, for us for this week, Peter? Uh, nope. <clears throat> I think that's about it. Blessings on you folks, and this is life here at McLaurin. You bet. Yep. Have a great week. Yep.